In this video is about corporate downsizing just to show you how this is done the introduction and you talk about history of um, downsizing some definition explain why is downsizing a moral issue because there are many issues that are not moral issues, like for example, issues about choosing what to wear in the morning, what kind of a shirt, dress to wear, choosing what type of pen you want to use. Those are no, not moral issues. Moral issues are issues that at the very least have impact on people whether negatively or positively. So you have to explain a bit about why corporate downsizing is a moral issue. Then you, section two, you talk about stakeholders. Explain who are stakeholders and who are the people affected by decision of um, corporate downsizing. Um, only talk about those uh, stakeholders who are directly uh, affected by uh, this issue. Um, <clears throat> you may discuss also envir business environmental factors uh, using the pastel. It does not matter you put the pastel in two or in part one. It does not matter as long as you cover them. Uh, talk about those environmental factors only that has an impact on um, corporate downsizing, not all. Then for me, broadly, I will start to discuss that there are two uh, types of uh, downsizing or downsizing exists in two contexts. I would say uh, the two contexts would be for survival or for profit maximization. Uh, have a short discussion about what do you mean by downsizing for survival and uh, what do you mean by for profit maximization the thing that you need to note is that when when uh, managers or corporate executive make decision to downsize they will always claim that this exercise is a exercise for survival downsizing for survival they will not tell you that I'm downsizing I'm retrenching people I'm uh, um, getting rid of uh, some of my stuff because I want to increase profit. No one will do that. This uh, corporate suicide, career suicide. Um, so they will always claim that we are downsizing because we face financial difficulties. The economy is not uh, coming up. Uh, the sales is not coming up. And uh, as a result, we need to do something about it. Uh, otherwise, our long-term survival is at stake. They will always claim downsizing is for survival. So let us uh, look at what is the ethical debate um, on downsizing. I say there is always a debate because uh, it means that uh, there will be two sides. Um, downsizing Let us look at the side where the, the claim is that downsizing is ethical. For those who argue that downsizing is ethical, there are some arguments supported by normative theories that will allow them to make this claim that it is ethical to downsize, number one. First argument would be, unless we downsize, we will go bankrupt. This is a utilitarian argument. Why? Because the options are simple. Number one, either we downsize or close down. Of course, downsize will be causing least harm. Closing down will be causing the most harm. So the option seems to be downsizing is ethical because we are looking at the consequence, the outcome. And this is a utilitarian argument. 
um, you can go to some detail to explain uh, a little bit about uh, definition of the theory applying the application of this theory in uh, downsizing and why it is the better option a second argument uses prima facie duty this argument says that the duty of the manager they all the managers all fiduciary duty to the shareholders of the firm and this fiduciary duty C R I C U R I R Y Okay you're going to do the spelling Fiduciary duty is the most incumbent and therefore this is my prima facie duty that, that would be the claim of the managers and because of this my duty is to save the company that is which is of course part of profit profit maximization my duty as an agent to my principal is to maximize the profit of the principal and therefore since I owe a fiduciary duty to the shareholders my principal and this duty is most incumbent and therefore I should downsize as part of my profit maximization exercise to save my company okay that will be the second set of argument again you must have some definition and then some application and uh, the argument supported by evidence finally uh, another argument you can use for downsizing uh, to support the view that it is ethical, you use the narrow view of CSR. Here, uh, there is a whole host of uh, explanation. What is the narrow view? Milton Friedman, Adam Smith, the doctrine of the invisible hand, and the argument uh, using uh, Nozick's uh, libertarian approach to property ownership um, and the assumption of uh, ethical egoism and um, the side effect of uh, maximizing uh, profit as a uh, part of self-interest uh, you will it will result in a greater good for society uh, the whole the three sets of argument the three sets of a uh, three line of argument here actually uh, explain the uh, doctrine of the invisible hand by adam smith okay so you have three sets of argument uh, that support the view that downsizing is ethical. What about downsizing is unethical in the other side of the debate? In the other side of the debate, <coughs> downsizing is unethical. Um, one of the strongest challenge would be from this guy called John Orlando. John Orlando's argument. John Orlando's argument is actually in your uh, textbook. Uh, page 190. This is the article. Please go and read. Okay, one to the. It, it looks like this. The. It's quite an uh, elaborate uh, explanation. Inside John Orlando's argument, there are some. Uh, there are some theories there. <clears throat> Predominantly, he is challenging the view that uh, uh, those who argue. Uh, using a prima facie duty, he says that um, there is no prima facie duty to prioritize your duty towards the shareholder only. In fact, um, he is arguing on the contrary that your prima facie duty uh, should be towards the employee instead. Okay, you need to read, and then he has other theories that he is using inside there, Rose theory as well. Um, so you need to handle uh, John Orlando carefully. Number two, the second set of argument uh, you can use is you can use Kantian. Kantian ethics. Now, for Kantian ethics, you have to be very careful how you apply it. Um, because Kantian ethics has many assumptions before they establish the uh, to formulation of the categorical imperative that normative claim is from the 
categorical imperative. So the correct application of the categorical imperative will allow you to make the claim that it is ethical or unethical. <clears throat> the claim that uh, to use reason alone, uh, to prioritize freedom alone, uh, those are the assumptions that uh, Immanuel Kant has to formulate his uh, normative theory. So uh, I would recommend um, using the second formulation uh, in this argument because in the second formulation it says that do not use people as a means to an end, merely as means to an end, but uh, rather as end in themselves. So the uh, the argument is that downsizing is using the employees as a means to an end of prof, uh, making more money for survival and so on. So the act itself for downsizing of using employees as a means to an end is therefore unethical. Um, the final set of argument number three, of course, you will talk about the broad view of CSR. Now, broad view of CSR, then you talk about Freeman, uh, Edward Freeman, you talk about the uh, social contract theory where uh, there is an implied social contract where the company uh, owes various stakeholders some responsibility and therefore a need to uh, balance uh, the demand of all stakeholders, not only shareholders, shareholders being part of the stakeholders. Okay, so you have this debate here. Now, how do you go about explaining the two contexts, survival and profit maximization? This would be, uh, notice that this is 3A, uh, 3B, sorry, 3B, and this is 3C. So, as I said, for all cases, the argument would be the case that the manager say is for survival. Then in this case, if it is actually the uh, case that the company need to downsize for survival, there are some questions that we need to ask uh, before we can consider whether it is ethical or unethical. The first question would be, this company that has arrived to this point where they make a claim that uh, we are downsizing for survival, the question is, was the decision made in the past, meaning the error made by the management, making mistake, uh, decision made by the top management, they made mistake, um, uh, their decision resulted in setting the company along a path where um, they, they lead to this situation where they need to downsize for survival. So if this is the case, then we say that, number one, Um, the manage, management are responsible to put the company in such circumstances where they need to downsize. So if this is the case, then we say that it is of, um, not the fault of the employees that the company has arrived at this situation where they need to downsize. It is due to the mistake, wrong decision, uh, careless uh, decision and actions of the management. Therefore, they are responsible. And accountable. Number two, or is it the case that it is beyond the control of the management? It is beyond the control of the management that the company is facing the threat of bankruptcy. If it is beyond the control, it, it means that. It is not 
due to the wrongdoing of the management. Therefore, the, manage, the, the management are not responsible for the circumstances that they're in, this context that they're in. Therefore, we say that, okay, uh, um, at least the management are trying their best uh, to save the company. Number three, we, we ask the question of, did the management do the best they can to save the company? Stopping short of downsizing, do the best they can. The, the best they can uh, to save the company. Example number one, pay cut for all. Number two, maybe less hours. Number three, <clears throat> um, less days, meaning instead of working five days, uh, all the staff uh, work for three days and so on and so forth. So are they doing their best to mitigate the situation, reduce costs uh, without downsizing? If it, they have done so, then number four, then downsizing is inevitable. If downsizing is inevitable, then we say that uh, we agree it is a scenario for survival. And it seems that, it seems to me at least, that the utilitarian argument is the strongest because there are only two options now. After you have done all this, there are only two options. Either you downsize to save the company or you shut down. It's a matter of time. So I think the strongest argument, if it is the case of downsizing for survival, would be the utilitarian argument. And you can, you, the prima facie duty uh, argument that is still open for debate uh, um, based on uh, John Orlando's uh, view. Uh, narrow view of CSR uh, is loaded with uh, too uh, many assumptions. Uh, whereas I, uh, I think the utilitarian argument, the, argu uh, the argument is quite straightforward because the, because the outcome is very clear. It's one or the other. Uh, so in this very narrow scenario, I think uh, downsizing for survival using the utilitarian argument is the strongest. Given all these are in place, huh? all these are in place. Okay, then I will say that uh, why I, I'm I'm giving you the reason right uh, for for uh, for a uh, ethical uh, if it is the case of survival. And I said uh, utilitarian is the strongest because some reason that I mentioned just now. Um, of course, you can further um, uh, explain uh, with your own reasons, right? Find some from some other arguments to support your case of 4A. I'm giving you just an example here. Um, then 4B. 4B. Okay, 4B. Why would I reject this argument here, remember, you need to explain why you reject this side, right? I would say that in the case of survival, if you don't downsize, John Orlando's argument is weak because you there is no more employees in the company when the company goes bankrupt. Therefore, you owe them no duties. Can you see? There's the John Orlando's argument is that uh, you owe a duty to uh, duty of care duty of beneficence, duty of non-maleficence towards your employee more than towards your shareholders, more than your fiduciary duty. In this case, if the company goes bankrupt, there is no duty to owe because there are no more employees. Right? Then my, my argument against Khan would be, I think Khan's argument is too rigid, uh, too absolutist. Uh, um, it does not reflect reality. Are, are we saying that in no case can we uh, uh, downsize? I mean, uh, regardless of, the, um, because they doesn't look at the consequence, right? The kind of ethics is uh, absolute in nature. When it's wrong, it's wrong in all situations at all time to all people. Then in this case, are we saying that no employees can be downsized? 
I don't think so. <clears throat> Whereas the broad view of CSR, uh, I would say in this kind of situation for survivor, the broad view of CSR is supported because otherwise it will cause more harm. Yeah, more harm because uh, there will be no more employees, uh, suppliers will be harmed yeah? uh, when, the, when employees do not have a salary to take back, um, they cannot support uh, their families, the community will be harmed as well. So in fact, the uh, focus on the narrow view um, of CSR has a consequence of supporting the broad view. So it's not one or the other. In effect, the narrow view of CSR by looking after profit first will have this consequence of having an impact on other stakeholders. I would say that uh, um, narrow view is a stronger argument in for survivor, and this is a weaker argument. Uh, this is my for B. If it is for survivor, now, what if it is the case that when we discover Actually, it's not for survival, it's for profit maximization. Meaning, once, how, how do we know that uh, um, uh, this downsizing is for profit maximization? You will observe that at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter, you notice that the top managements, uh, now they have a bigger bonus. Um, they change new cars, they go for long holidays, they, they renovate their office. Uh, they get a pay raise and you discover uh, the rhetorics used by this top management is that uh, the economy is not good, they are not doing well, company is uh, trying to survive, but at the same time, they are rewarding themselves. Now, this is called corporate greed, G-R-E-E-D. You know, they, uh, this is what happened when uh, corporate managers are greedy for money for themselves. This is ethical egoism. So you can have some critique about this kind of behavior. If this is the case that you discover in reality, corporate downsizing is for profit maximization, then the entire set of argument that is unethical become very strong because John Orlando's argument is very strong. If this is for corporate downsizing for profit. Now, why is this argument very strong? You have to go and read. Uh, you have to go and read about. <clears throat> and you see, he is trying to challenge the utilitarian argument, talking about um, a harm done to others, legitimate expectation, and so on and so forth, a raw theory and so on. Now, you have to go and read Orlando's argument. His argument is very strong that uh, if it is a scenario where uh, corporate managers downsize to increase profit to show a better bottom line so that they can they can report this in their financial report then Orlando's argument stand utilitarian argument is weak because this would be the case where they are the top management are downsizing for profit then you said if you are applying utilitarian argument you should use the marginal utility curve to criticize them and say that yeah, you are actually not consistent in your application of the utilitarian argument and in fact uh, the, uh, the utilitarian argument uh, proposed by the top management for downsizing for, 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 for downsizing in this case which is downsizing for profit maximization although they claim is for survival then you say that they are not consistent they are using the utilitarian argument to hide uh, their greed uh, for more money for themselves bigger bonus to show uh, the shareholders that they have done a good job to increase profit at the expense of low level uh, staff then you say that you should be applying the marginal utility curve uh, and you you know how the argument goes okay so you use this as a critique if you if you really um, want to apply the utility argument apply it consistently throughout and apply it to your surface tighten your belt uh, instead of rewarding yourself and of course the second argument uh, defeated by John Orlando and finally uh, there are so many limitations of the narrow view uh, in this in this case uh, you can start talking about the narrow view why you reject so why you accept uh, it is unethical Orlando's argument holds 
uh, content ethics uh, holds, uh, although I would say it's weaker because uh, it is too rigid, but it still holds. Um, you apply content ethics along the line uh, used by um, uh, Arnold and Bowie. Go and read the uh, uh, argument used by Uh, their application of uh, content ethics have two two parts. Uh, the first part they are saying that uh, don't cause harm, meaning don't use people as mere means. Um, this to me uh, is akin to. The duty of non-maleficent don't cause harm, right? Uh, number two, do something positive. Positive. Uh, doing something positive uh, is uh, treating people as ends in themselves. That is how they interpret their treating people as any in themselves, doing something positive, meaning the duty of beneficence. Okay, so um, uh, based on Arnold and Bowie's uh, argument using Kant's, uh, these two um, requirements would deny, would not allow managers to downsize for profit, causing harm to people, uh, at the very least, Violating this, violating this. Uh, of course, uh, then um, you can adopt a broad view of CSR as an argument. <clears throat> uh, you can apply some uh, CSR model, and uh, the argument may go along this line. You say that, um, uh, as a, in terms of consistency in policy, a company that adopt a broader view of CSR would not uh, treat their employees in this manner if they are serious about a broad view of CSR. Downsizing employees, using them uh, to maximize profit uh, by uh, reducing their jobs. <laughs> okay, so uh, so I have given you again uh, 4A and 4B, right? Uh, in the context of uh, Profit maximization. If this is really the case, and I have shown you that uh, how to explain, how do you know it is the case that company is downsizing for profit? So by looking at how uh, the top management reward themselves, uh, are they prudent in their decision making after the downsize? Now, for part five, let me write down here. For your final part five, uh, asking about some practical implication. So uh, you can talk about in the context of survival, the practical implications uh, can be this, number one. It can be the case that you say for survival, you are downsizing, we say it's ethical, but you are only buying time. Because you are buying time to extend the life of the company and you cannot, by buying time, just sit down and wait for uh, the next downsizing to happen. So you must have some strategy in place. You must have some turnaround plan. Introduce a new product, uh, uh, new contract, etc. Et Number two, <clears throat> you said... Uh, in the case for survival, uh, how you downsize is also relevant moral issue. How do you downsize? So here, um, probably uh, a good way is to use Ross theory to argue uh, how would you treat the least advantage uh, in your company? Those people who are uh, going to be downsized, how do you treat them uh, in a way that is just, that is ethical? 
then you apply uh, the uh, original position behind the wheel ignorance how uh, a decision maker in this kind of a position would uh, adopt a maximum principle uh, to arrive at a policy uh, an, an arrangement that is fair to all parties okay uh, if it is downsizing for profit of course the uh, implications uh, is that uh, it, it, it is unethical there should be some form of um, uh, corporate governance Uh, to make sure that uh, the top management are prudent in their use of money and they do not adopt I'm talking about five now right I'm talking about five some practical implication right prudent in the use of money uh, that the the use of uh, corporate downsizing is not uh, a tool that uh, should be used so easily uh, because of the harm done to people uh, corporate governance in the sense that the, the top management should be uh, held accountable, responsible for their actions. Uh, are they uh, using this tool of corporate downsizing just to maximize profit and causing harm? Uh, is this in line with their CSR policy of uh, uh, where they, if they say that they adopt a stakeholder theory, uh, do they treat their employees uh, merely as a tool to maximize profit um, so I think should be sufficient for your part 5 uh, to offer some uh, practical implication for uh, the, the context of downsizing if it is for profit maximization okay I hope uh, this explanation uh, will help you a bit um, to understand how to address uh, this uh, assignment it seems that uh, quite a number of students are not sure how to go about the assignment thank you